Assalamu alaikum everybody and welcome back to our channel. Muslim Parenting in the West. If you're finding value from our channel, please be sure to subscribe and like our video as well as comment with your feedback. Also, please don't forget to share our video with your family and friends and follow us on Instagram at Our Muslim Home. How do we Muslim parents approach Christmas with our children each year? That is our topic for today and we decided to mix it up a little bit with some interviews from some of our friends who are, who of course, our Muslim families and how they have approached Christmas with their children. Now, our three-year-old Safa does not have a complete understanding of what Christmas is so far. Safa does know what a Christmas tree is because it is everywhere. Yeah, but what, what do you do on Christmas? And get a Christmas tree and send some posts to Father Christmas. <laughs> now we do want you all to know that we as Muslim parents do not celebrate Christmas. And for those watching us today, whether you celebrate Christmas or not, our religion teaches us to respect everyone regardless of their choices. Having said that, we have reached out to our friend Anam who is married and has an eight-year-old daughter, Sophie. Anam had great tips and thoughts to share as to how she approaches Christmas with her daughter. And just to give some context, Sophie, Anam's daughter, is currently attending public school with children of all religions and background. And she certainly has been exposed to some of the common elements of Christmas that an eight-year-old sees in school. So without further ado, here is Anam. All right, Anam. So we're going to get started with the first question, which is how do you explain Christmas to your eight-year-old daughter? Um, and especially when she sees all the decorations and everybody, you know, um, decorating their, their house and at stores and in school. We have to acknowledge that Christmas and other beliefs exist, right? So for that, you need to like, there has to be a sense of like respect for other people's beliefs, just like how we celebrate Ramadan and Eve. We, you know, so I told Sophia that, listen, other people have this belief, right? But it doesn't mean that when you go to school, you disregard it because that's their personal belief, right? So for example, uh, Santa Claus, like I, we told her that, you know, he doesn't exist, right? But I told her not to go to her second grade class and be like, Santa Claus does not exist because, you know, she'll be the most hated kid ever. Right. So for that purpose, I feel like, you know, you have to allow your children to know that these things exist, like, because we're living in the United States, right? Where all beliefs coexist. I feel like our children know and they are exposed to it at an early age because even though there is a thing about like separation of religious and state, there really isn't though, right? Because when you go to kindergarten, you come home with worksheets, all of that. So we have to tell our children that, you know, Christmas does exist, but we have to be respectful and mindful of other people's feelings. We can't tell people, oh, you know, your belief is wrong. We believe our belief is right. Um, and Alhamdulillah, Sophia understands that. Like she gets it. Like. And if anything, she's actually really proud to share her own faith in class and stuff like that too. So I feel like acknowledging that exists and then not, you know, not brushing it under a rug. And if that mm-hmm. questions, we have to be open as parents to answer them. Of course, they have to be age appropriate answers. Like we're not going to be like, you know, telling them things from the Bible and Quran versus, you know, all that. But like, you have to be open to a discussion. And as they get older, they have more and more questions. So When they're younger, you kind of just, you know, have to say, like, for example, when she was in kindergarten, she's like, can we get a Christmas tree? And I was like, well, you know, we're Muslims. We celebrate Eid and Ramadan, and there's two Eids, right? We don't do Christmas. So she understood that. And now she never really asked for it. I mean, but if she says, for example, that a Christmas tree is so beautiful, I'll be like, yeah, it is. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's haram. Yeah. Because you have to acknowledge, right, that's there. Yeah. So I feel like. That's something that me and Tanel Alhamdulillah do. And we're on the same page on that, so it makes it a little bit easier. So do you want to talk a little bit about how Sophie responded? I know you said she understood, but yeah. what, what challenges you faced as a parent? Well, it depends, right? So she's a little bit older. She comprehends more. So her feedback, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, I always have an open conversation with her. I tell her that, like, if you feel like, you know, that you do feel left out or you feel like, oh, you know, I wish I celebrated. That's not anything mm-hmm. wrong, right? Mm-hmm. You have to acknowledge those feelings too because I remember growing up, like, you know, we were just told that, you know, that's all haram, that we don't, you know, partake in all that. But you have to give the alternative to children as well, right? You can't just be like, no, and not offer anything otherwise. Mm. So I feel like, you know, we told Sophia that if you feel like, oh, Christmas, you know, it's so cool, they, you know, it looks fun. That's completely normal because it is fun. And I feel like at this point, like a lot of people, um, 
who do celebrate it. It's sometimes not even more religious space. It's more like a cultural thing too now. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, they do snowman and they do like Santa Claus, they have all these things. So, I mean, if she partakes in something in school, that's fine because that's what the classwork is happening right now, right? Mm -hmm. So I do tell her that, you know, if you want, like, you know, if you feel like it's cool, if you have, if you feel like, you know, you like it, you like the Christmas trees and all that, that's absolutely okay. But like, I mean, I would like to, like, you'd have to make, I mean, it's also goes to like, you have to make sure that they also know like Eid and Ramadan is, you have to make that equivalent or even more fun, right? So when you give them that, then they realize that they're not missing out as much because they have something to look forward to. So you do, you did explain this, to her about religion yeah. and how like, you know, in our religion, we don't celebrate Christmas. We don't, you know, we don't take exactly. part. So that's yeah. something that you had a conversation with. How early was that conversation? Because she's eight now. But I'm sure like that's something that's been ongoing <laughs> since she was little, right? Like it has like the thing is she's also at the age now where before when we used to give her an answer she would be mm -hmm. like okay yeah. but now she actually questions it yeah like she'll be like baba but like why but why right yeah. so then but alhamdulillah she understands and i feel like um having this i mean if i can go back to the other question too yeah I feel like having a strong um close friends makes a big difference too okay because okay. you know you can always do like you guys for the video that you guys did for halloween you can do alternate things as well right right on that day or you know you have someone to relate to right. like you know i'm not the only one in that sense and like i said community makes a big difference as well sophia does ask questions about like you know um don't celebrate christmas uh because we're muslim she understands that concept but i don't think i've delved into like like the deeper purpose of like why they celebrate like about jesus and how yeah, you know so you all that beyond that okay so you know you kind of i feel like she's too. so young exactly yeah. and that was sufficient for her in the future i may have to hmm. but for now that was good enough for her that we're muslims and we have two holidays and mm -hmm. we have ramadan and she's so excited about it too like for example they, in class they had um like share something a, a moment in life or something and mm -hmm. she shared about how she fasted this ramadan for the first time yeah, so for her awesome. it was easy yeah, yeah. And, and alhamdulillah she's not embarrassed by it either so it's really good you know and i think that as parents you have to encourage it like sometimes we might feel self-conscious because we don't know how the other kids are going to react but alhamdulillah right. you know and you, like you said it's really important to have that community right so the, yeah she's very other much kids so. that who don't celebrate as well so she's not like oh i'm the only one that's not exactly right um something personally for us has worked out is like we enrolled her in sunday school yeah and sunday school i mean I'm very honest like most of the Islamic and the knowledge comes from the home because they're only there for two or three hours right? right but that community the sense of community the sense of friends that seeing everyone gather in one place every week makes a big difference I feel like um you see people kids like you you see like um you know you pray at the Jamaat once a week in the masjid so I mean obviously with corona and everything we haven't been attending but I think that makes a big difference too like exposing your kids to the masjid like showing them you know taking them to programs but the programs also have to be i feel like geared to children like i'm not gonna take her to something that's for us like a cr class right. or something yeah but i think that makes a big difference too our next interview is with mary and Uther, a dynamic family for context purposes mary is a convert to islam and she is married to Uther, and together they have four beautiful children ages three to eleven so christmas is um part of something that my family does um so i my family is christian um and we we do celebrate christmas with my parents um and we we explain it to our kids as a day that we spend with family um so the way that it's celebrated in my family's history has been just a day of eating and presents and just time with family. There's really nothing religious um, associated with it. Um, my parents do, um, they do gifts for us and for our kids. Um, and we do give them something small just to, because it's hard to show up to somebody's house when you know you're getting something not to give anything in return. Um, but we reserve our, like the big gifts for my parents and my, my um, siblings and um, my niece for, for Eid. So we do still celebrate Eid with my family. Um, and we really just explain it as a day to get together with family and, and eat. The most important thing for us, the way we approach it, is make sure that they are comfortable with who they are. I mean, respecting the traditions of their extended family or their immediate family, but like, you know, what is more important? 
is they realize that hey like this is something that we do with them but this is not us yeah, my, my parents still do like stockings from santa for all of our kids and i think actually for us too <laughs> um just because just to keep sort of the tradition alive um so we've had plenty of conversations about whether or not santa is real and why does he go to grammy and grandpa's house but he doesn't come to our house um and we basically just say that you know we don't we don't celebrate christmas so he goes to Grammy and Grandpa's house, um, but we do celebrate Eid. We put lights up and things when we celebrate Eid and we try to make that, if not more special, just as special as Christmas, just so that they can understand that um, we're, we're selling, celebrating something tangible. We're celebrating, you know, um, either the end of Ramadan or um, Eid al Adha, and that they get some, they get joy out of that as well. So we try to balance and make sure that our holidays are just as fun and sparkly and, and joyful um as christmas can be and christmas is always done away from our home whereas eid is always done at our home so it's something that's around right. all the time um and we talk about it a lot and that kind of thing and christmas is sort of just a day maybe two where we go to grammy and grandpa's we eat some food we get some presents and it's it's over so um i don't know that's kind of how we've handled it so yeah. i was going to ask like what age do you have that serious talk with them like where do you start because i know you have a three-year-old and the oldest is 11 so when do they start really questioning um a lot more it was actually pretty early i'm going to say probably by the time they were five or so we started talking about um who isa was who who jesus was who um, mary was kind of what mm -hmm. the story is around christmas um and how it how it compares and We've, we've done sort of, um, at the table, we tend to tell these stories or whatever it is, um, and they tend to come up a lot more during the winter, during Christmas time when it's around. Um, but yeah, I mean. I think the important thing is not to actually just leave the Christmas talk for Christmas. Right. Because I mean, like, you know, you're basically uh, like uh, normalizing the whole conversation on a I mean, on a very consistent basis. That way, when Christmas does come around, they know it's actually a holiday. Looks like you guys are doing a good job navigating around it, but where have you seen some of the challenges? So the biggest thing so far really has just been why, why, is, why is Grammy and Grandpa and my side of the family, um, why are they Christian and sort of what happens? What, as far as, you know, we are, we're taught that if we are Muslim and we're good Muslims and we have, you know, our good deeds that we are bad deeds and we go to heaven. But sort of what happens with with um, what happens with Grammy and Grandpa? What happens with Aunt So and So or Uncle So and So? Um, so we've we've actually been we've tried to keep it fairly vague because we are no experts. Neither of, you know, of us are experts in this. Um, and just say that it's you know it's our responsibility just to keep talking to them about it, about Islam and to to keep saying you know to make sure you say Bismillah out loud when you eat at their house or to say you know whatever it is to make sure that we're praying even when we go to Grammy and Grandpa's house. Um, so that has probably been the hardest, the hardest thing to explain just because they're really not old enough to understand a lot of the deeper subjects. You guys are saying that when your children keep, keep growing up and when they do go to school and if they do feel that peer pressure where the peers might say, Hey, we, I don't know, I guess we had Christmas in our own home where we know we celebrate Christmas at home. You know, do you anticipate that to be an issue? where um, you know, the school... it hasn't really so far I mean our kids went to public school until just a couple of years ago so they definitely had some of that at school and um, some of the crafts that they would do would be a little Christmas related or they would have I mean music concerts and they were Christmas songs or whatever um, and because our kids were young at that point we really didn't do uh, a whole lot but while we were in Maine while we lived there I did work with um, an interfaith group to to talk to the school boards about getting Islamic Islamic holidays on the calendar so that mm -hmm. we could also say that it is now time for Eid or it's during Ramadan and that we could also educate the kids in the community um, and the parents in the community about those things as well so um, and it went sort of okay some of the smaller towns were like yes absolutely we'll do it some of the bigger city the town the city that we were in um was not super excited because they felt it was going to open the door to all these religious mm -hmm. holidays and things um which was a lot so they're still working on it but it at least opened a conversation um and even for Eid I sent cookies with Nadia to school we had moon shaped and lantern shaped cookies I sent her to school and I had um both she and Nadia and Alia they were in maybe third yeah, and 
kindergarten maybe, um, had written a little thing about what is Eid. So they, yeah, one of them had their teacher read it, one of them was brave enough to read it aloud to their class, and they passed out some cookies. And so there was a little bit of education there too, and they could say, mm -hmm. we, we also celebrated at home. And at the time, there weren't any questions from their friends, but later in the day when they had recess, each of them said that a couple of friends came up and asked them, why, why were there moon cookies? Like, what does that have to do with anything that you're celebrating? Or why, you know, why are you celebrating here? Or how do you celebrate? Do you get presents? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it did open up a little conversation that way too. Before we had kids, we had a lot of conversations about how we thought we would handle this. Um, and I think we ended up somewhere in the middle between where each of us thought we were, we were going to be as far as how we interacted with my family, what we allowed our kids to do. Um, and, you know, we're, we, don't, we don't have the right answer for anybody. You know, of course, somebody else in the same situation may handle it a little bit differently. Um, but we just really felt that the way that my family celebrated Christmas was so family centered that we didn't want our kids to miss out on that. So the purpose of our video today is not to alienate people, but to appreciate our differences. And we hope you found our video today to be helpful. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.